Good morning, everyone. So we will talk about reading passage one today. Uh, it is about the Australian artist, Margaret Preston. So let's analyze the questions first. We have two different question types in this passage. First one is true, false, not given. The second one is gap filling. All right, first off, we will analyze the question types. Okay, so let's start with the first one. Artists in the German aesthetic tradition portrayed nature realistically. Okay, the keywords are this one here. Right. Okay, second. Great, now it's fine. So German aesthetic tradition portrayed, portrayed means showed nature realistically. The next one is Margaret attended the famous art college in Paris. Okay, so she attended um, a famous art college in Paris. Number three, Margaret met her husband William while teaching a craft at the rehabilitation unit. All right, she met her husband while she was teaching at um, a rehabilitation unit. Following Margaret, Kirsten and Thea Proctor explore, explore similar themes in their art. So I want to find out about uh, whether these two people, right? So explore them, similar themes in their art. Uh, number five, Margaret's 1925 artworks of Sydney Harbor were simpler than her previous one, okay. So they were simpler than her previous work. Uh, number six, colors in Margaret's Berura prints were very bright, okay. Berura prints would be the keyword for us to find the location faster. And we need to find out whether um, the colors were very bright or not. When living in Berura, so while she was living in this location, she painted flowers in their natural world, right? Uh, natural location, okay, sorry. So um, she painted flowers in their natural location. Following is Aboriginal influence. Okay, this is a keyword for me. Interest in Aboriginal work was inspired by seeing rock engravings, okay. Uh, this will help me to find the location faster. Close to, okay, it's about Berura, right? And so if you remember, we had questions here, number six and seven. So probably this gap filling questions will be located in the same place. Then incorporated, which means included. So she included something and colors, right? And colors from Aboriginal art in her own work often referred to original sources um, in the something she gave her artworks. Okay, I will take a good look at every question, like the remaining questions later, because um, I have the keywords for me to find the location first. So I don't have to waste my time uh, going through each of these questions. Now let's start with the first one. Artists in the German aesthetic tradition portrayed nature, nature realistically. All right, and so Margaret has library paintings and princess on flowers. So there is no information about Germans. All right, so I, I found German aesthetic tradition right here. Can you see that? All right, let's carefully read the information here. Um, so she portrayed nature realistically, right? Her early artwork was influenced by the German aesthetic tradition in which subjects of the na natural world, which is the synonym of nature, right? So we can write it down here, uh, nature, where it depicted, which means uh, portrayed, right? Portrayed in a true to life manner, uh, which refers to realistically, right? Realistically, okay. So our answer of question number one is here. So we can simply show it with this color. So question. Okay. Question number one. Right, it's located here. And our answer of the first question is going to be true. All right. Great. Following, Margaret attended a famous art college in Paris. All right, I found the information about Paris here. Paris, so Margaret's first visit to Europe in 1904 and her studies in Paris. 
Uh, so there is information about her studies. We need to find whether um, she attended the famous art college. Very friends had little impact on this naturalism that dominated her work from this early period. However, some 80 years later, after returning to Paris, she began to recognize the decorative possibilities of art. All righty. So question number two is located here. Question number two. Um, all right, it's here. And our answer is not given. So there is no information about whether she attended um, a famous art college or not. Okay, following, Margaret met her husband, William, while teaching a craft at the rehabilitation unit. All right, so the next one is about outbreak of the First World War. All righty. All right. All right, I found William Preston here. William Preston. All right, let me cry. Um, in England's West Country, she taught basket weaving. All right, here the word basket weaving is going to refer to uh, craft, craft at a rehabilitation unit for servicemen. All right, so this is our location. Um, question number three. So in England's West Country, she taught basket weaving at a rehabilitation unit for the servicemen. It was on board a boat returning to Australia that she met wealthy businessman, William Preston, when she married in 1919. Okay, this is our exact location right here. So you can see that she did not meet him um, at the rehabilitation unit, but it was on board. Uh, of a boat return to Australia. So, which means our answer of the question number three is going to be false. So, it is going to be false. Number four, Margaret Preston and Theo Proctor explored similar themes in their art writing. So, I need to find out about these two people and whether they explored the similar topics in their art, All right? So, as you can see here in this next paragraph, we have information about Thea Proctor. So her first major showing in Australia was, was her friend Thea Proctor in exhibitions in Melbourne and Sydney in 1925. Many of Preston's prints were hand colored in rich scarlet reds, blues and greens, and all of them were set in Chinese red liquor, right? Frames, harbor views were uh, again prominent, but in comparison with earlier, artworks, they were compact and busy. Okay, so I found nothing about whether they shared similar themes, which means that our answer of this question is going to be not given, okay, not given. Number five, all right, so, and here you can see 1925, so let's put here question four. All right, question four, it's right here. Now, following 1925. So many of Preston's prints were hand colored in rich scarlet reds. So it's really were set in China's land. A red liquor frames, harbor uh, views were again prominent, but in comparison with earlier artworks. So here uh, I see the information about earlier artworks, right? But it's not about her earlier artworks, right? They were compact and busy using striking contrast of black and white combined with elaborate patterns and repetitions. Other prints from the spirit featured native lore. It was with this still life subjects that she convinced the public that Australian native flowers were equal in beauty to an exotic species. Still, I found no information about um, any comparison, right, of her artwork with her previous ones. So, and again, answer of this question is also not given, right? Number six, the colors in Margaret, okay, so number six and seven are about Berura, which means our answer of uh, the Gaffelin questions will also come right now in the next paragraphs. So do we have Barora? Yes. So we have information about Barora here. Let's read it carefully. 
From 1930 to 1939, Preston moved away from Sydney and lived with her husband at Berura on the upper reach of the Hawkesbury River. The area was one of rock natural beauty and for the first time, Preston found herself living in a home surrounded bush. Prior to this, the native flowers that featured in her paintings and prints had been purchased from local florists, right? So still no information about the colors. They now grew in abundance around her home. Preston's point, uh, prints became larger, less complex, and less reliant on the use of bright colors. Alrighty, so our information of um, number six, our answer of the question number six comes here. Number six. Um, all right, uh, let's read it carefully now. Preston's prints became larger, less complex, and less reliant on the use of bright colors. Less reliant means, you know, it was less dependent, right? So less reliant on the colors, which means she did not use uh, very bright colors a lot, right? And our answer of this question will be false. Right? Following, when living in Beroda, Margaret painted flowers in their natural location, right? Flowers were no longer arranged in vases, right? Uh, and Preston began to concentrate instead on flowers that were growing wild. Alrighty, so they were in their natural location, see? Uh, she started concentrating on flowers that were growing wild. Here, answer for question number seven is given. All right, and our answer of this question will be um, true, true. All right, now moving on to the next one. Uh, interesting version of work was inspired by seeing rock and graves close to a girl at home, incorporate something and colors from original art. Okay, so here you can see a version of rock engravings here are in, in, in our answer, right, in the text. All right, so I wanted to find out about what she uh, included, right, in her own work, um, like the combination of colors and something. So great, while living in Berlin, and undoubtedly prompted by the original rock engravings found near her property, Preston also developed what was to be, okay, technical mistake, I think, what was to be. A uh, long, lifelong interest in Aboriginal, Aboriginal art on return to Sydney in 1939. She became a member of the Anthropological Society of New South Wales and later visited the many important Aboriginal sites throughout Australia. Person believed that Aboriginal provided the key to establishing national body of art that reflected the vast and ancient continent of Australia. Okay, I still found nothing about the colors. During the 1940s, symbols used by Aboriginal art together with dry burned colors. Okay, I found information about colors here. So um, this is the location. Question number eight is given here. All right. So during the 1940s, symbols used by Aboriginal people together with dry burned colors together means and. Right, so colors and symbols found in traditional Aboriginal paintings became increasingly prominent in her prints. All right, our answer of number eight is going to be, I'll write it down here, it will be symbols, All right? Symbols, All right, so let's write it with a, a small letter, symbols. Uh, following work often referred to Aboriginal sources in the something she gave her artworks. All right. The artist titles from this period frequently acknowledge her sources. So sources means, you know, uh, original sources. Um, and reveal the extent, right, to which she drew inspiration from traditional Aboriginal art to create her own art. So which means um, referring to the artwork she gave, right? So here, the only answer that fits into our question is titles, right? So um, she often referred to Aboriginal sources in the titles 
she gave her artworks. So our answer of question number nine will be titles. Okay, so this is the location, number nine. Okay. And the following is, following is, very old method. All right, 1953. Do we have 1953? Right here. Yes, in the next part, we have 1953. Exhibition, very old method of something was used for some prints. So for some prints, right, um, very old method of something was used. So I want to find out about what, um, what was used here. At the age of 78, that person produced her most significant prints. The exhibition at right, Mercury Galleries in Sydney include 29 prints uh, made using the ancient technique known as stenciling or stenciling. I don't know the correct pronunciation of the word. All right, so ancient refers to very old. Technique is the synonym of methods. And the answer is stenciling. All right, so let's write it down here. All right, following was inspired by something about Chinese art she had started collecting in 1915. So in 1915, so she, start, she started collecting um, something from the Chinese art, right? So many of the artworks in the exhibition incorporated her fusion of Virginal and Chinese concepts. Okay, I found information about China here. And um, 1915 is the keyword, so you can see it right here on your screen. Prince Preston had admired. Okay, admire is the synonym of uh, inspiration, right? So she was in inspired or she admired Chinese art since 1915 when she acquired. Acquired means when she, you know, got the first of right, her many books on the subject, all right, so which means she started collecting books, all right, her answer of the question number uh, 11 is given here, did I write 10 here, no, I didn't write, okay, so question number 10 was given here, and our answer is um, stenciling, all right, let's highlight it here, this way. Now following um, question 11. All right, question 11. Preston admired Chinese art since 1915 when she acquired the first of her many books on the subject, so her answer of the question 11 will be books. All right, number 12, I'm still interested in something in art. All right, still she's interested in something in art, old age. However, in our prints of the 1950s, person combined Chinese ideas with her understanding of the Dreamtime creation stories of Aboriginal Australians. Person did not let age alter. So here information is given about her old age. Alter means change her habit of working hard. As she got older, her love of painting, printmaking, and travel continued. All right, so we got three points here. Painting, printmaking, and travel. And if we consider painting and printmaking as art, our answer will be travel. So let's write it down here. Question. All right. Uh, she worked for nearly six decades, making more than some sort of artworks, right? It's, it's uh, about the number of artworks that, that she um, worked on, right? So one second. 
following by the time of her death in 1963 when she was 88 she had produced it produce it is a synonym of uh make right over which is referring to more than right and 400 paintings and prints paintings and prints will be artworks and our correct answer is 400 all right so question number 13 is given here location and our answer for this question is 400 all right that's it ladies and gentlemen this is how you find the answers and um i usually after finishing each reading task i usually write down a keyword table like the words given in the question and similar expressions i found um in the text all right this helps me better understand uh, the difference between words, right, and grammar and all the structures. All right, this is how you find the answer. Thank you for your time. See you next time. Bye.